Welcome everybody, my name is Michael Ward Kubera. Today we are discussing about this. What is this? We have an address, total received 17.3 BTC, total sent 17.36 BTC, here it is, and there we go. There are 598 remaining, so over 600 addresses. Wow, that is a lot, and every single one of them 547 Satoshi. So what is this? Let's discuss today about crypto dusting. What is Bitcoin dust? Should you be worried about it? And you might possibly have this. And if you haven't, you might get it in the future. Now, of course, these are becoming a little bit more rare. But over the past few years, there's been certainly plenty of these crypto dusting attacks. However, not every single one of these cases is a crypto dusting attack. In my opinion, we're going to be discussing about this in another video, probably on Wednesday about this. Right now, we're just going to be discussing what is crypto dusting. Then we're going to go into details on what this address particularly might be doing. Where in my opinion, I think this is a very expensive advertisement because that is also so another thing that they could be doing apart from trying to discover details about the addresses that they're sending to. So let's get into it. Just wanted to say that I invested this week $500 into DeFi and an additional $1,000 into an exchange account for altcoins. Part of them are DeFi projects. Not every single one is. We're going to be doing some videos about those altcoins, both on Kubera and on my other channel. If you're not subscribed yet, we have officially hit over 500 subscribers. Links are in the description below and let's get on into it. So first of all, you might be wondering what is up with this 547? Why are they choosing? using 547 in the past this has been going on since the earliest case i found of this was even in 2010 so this has been going on since almost the inception of bitcoin itself and here we are on our bitcoin why always 547 i've seen it as 546 so i guess 546 is the lowest and can go but some people are saying 547 so it really depends the dust limit in most wallets won't let you create or spend a UTXO below 547. The attacker is giving these addresses the minimum on-chain spendable amount. What is a UTXO? It is an unspent transaction output. So they're hoping that someone will sweep these unspent transaction outputs in a single transaction and then they can collect more metadata to associate with the address. So who might be doing this? Chain analysis companies. The more metadata they collect, the less anonymous the address might become. Why are are they doing this for example and this is probably why i was banned from coinbase coinbase is one of the largest companies that we know that works with chain analysis other companies right so they're tracking almost all of their users probably every single one at this point and they're looking for possible links to illicit funds to darknet addresses to criminal activities to any dirty money and this is pretty shady because even if someone receives a donation which that might have happened in my case, or they get something like this, a 547 Satoshi Bitcoin randomly just sent. They have no idea what it is. Obviously, since it's a repeating attack, in most cases, this is a Bitcoin dust attack. Coinbase hopefully looks at this as not the end user, their client's fault, but whoever's sending this, because most likely it's the chain analysis companies that are doing this, that they're working with in the first place. But there are other people, criminals and hackers, who might also be doing this as well, not only the chain analysis. So there's the good side and the bad side. But Coinbase is basically looking for any dirty money. And if you have anything, anything from the past few years that's connected to your current Coinbase account to your Coinbase wallet. If they see dirty money, they might flag you. They might put you on a blacklist. And if there's enough, I'm not sure what those limits are. They might be just one single transaction. You might get banned without actual reasons. Unfortunately, I never found out and other people aren't going to find out. That's Coinbase's policy. They're just going to keep you in the dark. So we're not sure, but we do know that they work with other companies and I'm sure other exchanges do this as well. It's basically collecting as much data as they can. Imagine having a hundred dollar bill in your pocket. Now imagine a hundred dollars worth of pen Notice the difference. Bitcoin isn't without its irritating kinks, and tiny Bitcoin pieces called dust are among the lesser knowns. As the analogy above shows, the Bitcoin protocol sometimes needs to generate tiny output coins when users send Bitcoin back and forth. Coins so small in value, they require more fees to spend than they're actually worth. But since blockchain room is limited and small value transactions, say one cent, still can often take up just as much room as larger transactions, too many of these tinier coin pieces can lead to performance issues. 
issues in the system as a whole. Bitcoin dust refers to the small amount of Bitcoin left over or unspent in a transaction that is lower in value than the minimum limit of a valid transaction. Whenever any transaction occurs on the Bitcoin network, it needs to be validated for authenticity so the transaction can be processed in a reasonable amount of time. Since this transaction is so small, it makes the transaction almost impossible to process. Sometimes it's below the amount or fee required to spend the Bitcoin. Miners validate the transaction and add it to the blockchain network. They're paid a mining fee for performing the service. Depending on the difficulty and depending on the congestion of traffic, for example, as soon as Bitcoin is rising, even right now, the Bitcoin transaction fees could be very high. We've seen it as high as $40, $50 recently, as we're approaching $50,000. So if you're sending $1, it is very expensive to send Bitcoin because these miners, this whole ecosystem needs to be supported by these fees. So due to the working mechanism of the blockchain network, at times the mining fee can be higher than the actual amount of the transaction. Many people are frustrated with this. Obviously, there are very high fees. So I think you should look into the Bitcoin Lightning Network. But you have to understand that not every exchange, not every wallet is still on board with the Bitcoin Lightning Network. It's it's a political thing. So Bitcoin dust is basically the leftovers. It's the crumbs. And it refers to a Bitcoin transaction amount where the fee is higher than the transaction amount. It's just not worth it. You shouldn't really care. And currently this 547 Satoshis is worth 27 cents. So it's not a whole amount. If you don't do anything with it, technically, depending on what wallet you have, technically it's free money. But there are certain wallets where they combine everything. And if you're consolidating, it's going to cost you. And it's going to, yeah, it's just not worth it. There are some wallets where you're able to go in depth and you're able to freeze this amount. But we're going to be discussing about that. Bitcoin dust is not something most crypto holders should be concerned about. But it's a good idea to know what those small amounts are in your wallet and how they accumulate. So in a Bitcoin wallet, wallet, your balance is the sum of your unspent transaction outputs, UTXOs. Let's say you have a Bitcoin wallet with UTXOs of 0.25 BTC, 0.56, 0.19, 0.93. This would give you a total balance of 1.95. Let's label these UTXOs 1 to 4. If you wanted to spend 0.25 to a friend, you could use any UTXO except number 3 as it's below the amount you want to send. With each of the viable options, you'd have Bitcoin left in your wallet after you the 0.25 BTC. However, if you use the first U2XO, you'd receive very little change back. Using this option, your friend receives the 0.25 BTC, and if the current transaction is fee 0.00020531, you'd have 4,377 Satoshi. This very small amount is called dust. If you use the second or fourth UTXO, you'd receive a large UTXO back, which wouldn't be dust. Earlier wallets let you manually select UTXOs, but most wallets these days automatically select the UTXOs to be spent in order to minimize the fees and dust. Is crypto dust bad? It's not. It's just a small byproduct. You'll see dust not only when you transact, but when you trade as well. Can you receive crypto dust without doing anything? Yes, you can receive it. It's called a crypto dusting attack or just dusting. This is where dust is sent to a huge number of addresses, usually tens of thousands, in order to try to track payments and connect them to a business or an individual. So if they're sending tens of thousands of transactions, this chain analysis company, they will see which wallets, if your wallet is the one that combines everything, they will see your other addresses. They will see UTXO 1, 2, 3, and 4 combine with whatever Satoshi that they sent. It is a very small price for them to pay 27 cents for each of these transactions. If, for example, they are under a government contract or they're working with Coinbase or any of these billion dollar companies, if they're getting paid millions of dollars, it's worth it to spend thousands and thousands to get this data. Data is the new oil. A dusting is not necessarily malicious. They have also been used to send out messages and to advertise in the cryptocurrency space. So sometimes companies write down in the little memos and the little notes and it redirects to a website. And that's what I suspect has happened with this other address that I found. Should you be worried about getting dusted? Dustings have waned in popularity. You could probably consider them to be more of an annoyance than a major issue. However, if you have large holdings, you may want to be cautious. Dusting has the potential to de-anonymize or unmask a user. So how does this happen? If they know you're able to figure out where an address is, if it's on an exchange, sometimes 
sometimes you're able to figure out which exchange it is. And if they're working, if it's a chain analysis company or if it's hackers, if they have inside information into, for example, Binance or Coinbase, they're able to connect it since due to KYC, if it's a large enough Bitcoin holding or cryptocurrency holding, then the exchange has your data. They have your ID, they have your address, they have everything. So they're working all together and they're able to find out whether you have dirty money or not, how much you have, which other addresses you own. Whether you get this dust or not, if someone wants to clearly figure out a wallet, it's still difficult. It's not going to reveal everything about you. You still need that exchange KYC information. If you never did KYC, it's a lot harder. I don't think they're able to track down who it is unless they have other external information leading to these addresses. So you don't have to really worry that they're going to be hacking into your account. They're not going to steal your Bitcoin. It's mainly just trying to figure out, piecing this puzzle together who you might be. And if they're doing it to thousands and thousands of transactions, it's usually just a chain analysis company. They could be hackers that are looking for whale wallets and they're trying to figure out which exchanges they might be using if they hack into an exchange. But that, it was kind of in the early Wild West days. Now, you're mainly gonna see this with legitimate companies that are just trying to gain information on you which you know goes against the whole privacy aspect of cryptocurrency, but it is what it is. You're able to use Monero if you really don't like this. If a user's dust is already all tied to the same account, then the dust is already linked together anyways. So mashing the dust together into one transaction in this case won't harm a user's privacy. In cryptocurrencies, it's best practice for financial privacy not to reuse Bitcoin addresses, but for convenience, you can reuse the same Bitcoin address. So for example, in my case, since I've received a fair amount of donations in the past through Kubera, it's easier to track everything in one wallet. Now, of course, that doesn't mean I have only one wallet, but if I have changing addresses, that's not great for donations or for other stuff. So it's easier to clean up dust depending on the fees, right? And depending on the volumes, if payments aren't coming in at such a high volume, it's easier to work with. But as you have more volume, as the level of transactions heat up, there could be more dust and there will always be someone who's willing to pay even if transaction fees get higher, even if you maximize, even if it goes up from, let's say, 547 Satoshis to 1,000 Satoshis or the minimum output is 2,000 or 5,000 Satoshis, it's going to cost more because if you're sending to tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of transactions, there are going to be people who are working with these large companies or government agencies and they're still getting paid well. So they wouldn't even mind paying sometimes a dollar or two dollars or even a few dollars per address. So that is that. That's the simple explanation. In the next video, we're going to be going into what happened with this address that I found. And we're also gonna explore how this particular address leads to another address, which I was looking at. And if you go through and you explore, you're able to find discrepancies using blockchain.com. So that'll be coming out on Wednesday. For the most part, you don't have to worry about this. I mean, at the end of the day, you really don't care about privacy. It's a free 27 cents that you got. It's not usually necessarily malicious. And if it is advertising, then yeah, you did get an extra 27 cents for free basically so that is crypto dusting hopefully you've enjoyed today's video if you did hit that like comment and subscribe button and we will be posting every single wednesday every single sunday been doing a good job so far thank you for all the views thank you for all the appreciation and if you'd like to see more of my videos on a daily basis, you can check out my secondary channel, my main channel, I guess you could say. Link is always in the description below, and we shall see you guys in the next video. So thank you for joining in. Hopefully you're having a great weekend, and Bitcoin is so close to 50,000. Not too long ago, I remember it was at 10K. So hopefully you've made good money, and hopefully it continues to rise. So have a good one. Bye.